Hey, this is Mr. Aiden, and this is the Beers Law Laboratory Vodcast, where we're going to be uh, on the block day doing a lab, a pretty long lab, where we're going to be finding the concentration of an unknown solution. We're going to find this concentration using a thing called colorimetry. So today on this uh, vodcast presentation, we're going to be doing uh, an introduction, pretty lengthy introduction, um, a pretty lengthy procedure of this lab. I'm going to show you a data table that you're going to need, some post-lab questions, and then also how you're going to be graded. So anytime you're doing a Beer's Law type problem, you want to go to your equation sheet, and especially you want to look at your gases, liquids, and solutions part of your equation sheet. You want to zero in on one equation, the equation all the way at the bottom, which is A is equal to A, B, C. This A is equal to ABC is a, is a simple equation. It's as, actually as easy as ABC. And where A, the capital A, stands for absorbance. The little a stands for a thing called molar absorptivity. B stands for path length. And C stands for concentration of your solution. Let me tell you a little bit about um, one of these absorbance versus concentration type problems. We're, we're going to be filling our solution in a thing called a cuvette. Cuvette's what you're going to hold your solution with. And to that solution, we're going to sort of blast it with a photon of light. And when we blast it with a photon of light, if we have, say, water, most of the photon of light will go straight through because the water won't absorb any of that light. It's going to transmit or have 100% transmittance of that light. And we can set up a detector in, that will will measure the absorbance of that light, how much it will absorb. Uh, water won't really absorb anything, but it will transmit 100%. So those values are inversely proportional. If we put something that's colored inside, say like uh, copper sulfate or iron chloride, the amount of photons of light that we blast at this solution, it's going to start absorbing some of it, which means it's going to transmit less and less and less and it's going to absorb more and more and more the more concentrated it is. So absor absorbance and concentration are directly proportional. So when we have this equation A is equal to ABC, I hope you can see that it is in a Y is equal to MX plus B form. Y will be our absorbance, our X will be our concentration. And our slope is going to be this, this A value times your B value. It'll be these constants. Now what's kind of interesting is, in this lab, what we're going to do is, we're going to have known concentrations. We're going to have what we call standard concentrations that we know. And from these standard concentrations, what we're going to do is, we're going to measure the absorbance of these concentrations. And then when we measure the absorbance of these concentrations, we're going to end up finding that the more concentration we have, the more it will absorb. And this will actually come out to be a linear slope. And from that linear slope, we can find a whole bunch of things. We can find the A times B value, that constant value. We can also find out when we have an unknown solution, if we know how much it absorbs, we can know that unknown's concentration. Okay. Now, now on to the laboratory procedure. When you walk into the laboratory on, uh, on Friday or Thursday, that block day, the first thing you're going to do is find your partner that's on the board. And then you're going to get your safety glasses on. Now, I'm going to want you to put safety glasses on, especially when you're doing the pipetting in this lab. And so you're going to get, immediately with your partner, you're going to get seven test tubes. You're going to want to get a test tube rack to hold those test tubes. You're going to want to get two beakers and you're going to want to get two pipettes and you're going to want to get one pipette bulb and this is what you're going to get with your partner now one of these beakers is going to be just for the copper sulfate and one of these test tubes or pipettes I should say is going to be just for the copper sulfate and one of these beakers is going to be just for water and one of these pipettes will be just for water so make sure you you keep these separate and only use copper sulfate with your bulb and or your uh, pipette and your beaker that's for copper sulfate and the same thing with water and we're gonna have two solutions sitting up there on, on my front desk we're gonna have a 
an unknown solution, and we're going to have a 0 0.40 molar, what I call a stock solution that you can keep going back to. Let's not worry about the unknown right now, but let's just focus on the 0 0.40 molar. You're going to put about 50 to 100 milliliters of that 0.4 molar stock solution in your beaker. And in your other beaker, you're going to put about 50 to 100 milliliters of water. Now onto the pipetting part. You're going to do some pipetting according to the, the data table that I'm going to give you in just a few minutes. And I want to show you what pipetting actually looks like. Here's myself. You can see I put it in the copper sul sulfate solution. I use the pipette bulb to suck that copper sulfate up. I cover it with my thumb or my finger, and I go and I get exactly the milliliters that I want to get. Make sure your meniscus is right at about, if you're doing 8 milliliters, get 8 milliliters. And you're going to put it in your test tube. After you fill up your test tube, you also want to do some water. And again, you suck it up with the test tube, with the, with the bulb. You let some out. You get exactly what you need. You can see I'm getting about 2 milliliters there. And I'm going to put it right in that test tube. Make sure it's all mixed up. And you're ready to go pipette another one. It's going to take you some practice, so you might want to do it a couple times. The one thing you don't want to do is suck that liquid, suck that solution or that water up inside your pipette bulb. Don't do that. Do not do that. Make sure you practice with some water before you go to your copper sulfate. Now, in one of your test tubes, you're going to put in 0 milliliters of 0.4 molar copper sulfate, which is very easy. You don't put any in. And you're going to put in 10 milliliters, so pipette 10 milliliters of H2O. It's a good practice there. In the next solution, you're going to put in 2 milliliters of 0.40 molar copper sulfate and 8 milliliters of water. And you're going to go on and, and do this as according to the data table. Let's take a look at the data table. You're going to have six test tubes where you do some dilutions. And you're going to have, of course, one test tube where you're going to put your unknown. Make sure you label your test tubes before you begin so that you keep them straight. And you'll see that the concentration will continue to increase with the more copper sulfate that you put in. You're going to have to find out the concentration part of this table. So you're going to have to do that before you ever walk in the lab. Okay. Now onto the laboratory procedure where we're going to use the colorimeter. I want to show you a quick video of me doing this. Um, I have the cuvette, and see how the cuvette has rigid sides, which you're going to hold, and it has clear side, which the light will go through. You can see I pour the solution in, I rinse, I pour the solution in, I rinse. It's good to do two rinses, and then put your solution in. You see I'll fill it about three quarters to maybe a little bit more of the way full. I dry off, making sure I have no drops on the outside. I place it in the colorimeter with the arrow going to where the light's going to go through, and I close the lid. And I'm ready to go. So this is your lab procedure. You're going to want to rinse the cuvette with your blank, or your test tube one, which is your water. You're going to fill a cuv that cuvette three quarters of the way full with that water. You're going to dry the clear side with the tissue, again, making sure there's no fingerprints, making sure there's nothing, um, nothing that has, is obstructing the light going through. You're going to put the cuvette correctly inside the colorimeter and shut the lid. You're going to press the button cal and wait for it to calibrate. You only have to do this once, so only calibrate it once at the beginning. And then you want to set the wavelength to 635 nanometers. If it's not at 635, it's not going to work, okay? Because that's what blue, this blue copper sulfate solution will actually absorb. Then you're going to start and press the collect button, collect button. You're going to rinse again with test tube 1. You're going to fill. You're going to dry. You're going to insert it into the colorimeter. And then you're going to press keep. Now this is called your blank. And you're going to type in the value 0, 0.00 because it's 0, 0.00 molar of that solution. You're going to empty it. You're going to rinse it now with test tube 2, which is the next lowest concentration of copper sulfate. You're going to rinse, rinse, fill, dry, put it in press keep and then you're going to type in the value for the concentration that you calculated in your table. 
you're going to continue through, you're going to do the same exact thing. Continue through all your standards all the way through your 0.4 molar copper sulfate solution. After you're done that, you're going to press stop. After you press stop, you're going to examine your graph by pressing the linear regression icon and record your y equals mx plus b equation onto your data table. Okay? Then you're going to, at the end of everything, rinse your cuvette very well with your unknown solution. You're going to fill, you're going to dry the outsides, and then you're going to analyze it to determine its absorbance. Okay? Here are some points to remember. Make sure you record all your absorbances in your data table. Just in case you lose something, you will have all your absorbances. Be consistent. This is probably the most important thing. Be consistent in the timing of your rinsing, your filling, your drying, your analyzing. Handle only the outside of the cuvette, not the clear side. You're going to handle it with the ridges. Make sure that the arrow where the light is going inside that colorimeter is going through the glass through the glass side, not the rigid side. And be consistent with the time you close the lid to when you press keep. Be consistent. That's the big thing in this lab is be consistent. Now here's your post lab questions. You're going to use your best line fit equation and the absorbance of the unknown. Calculate the concentration of your unknown. That's number one. Number two, what two values does the slope represent? And what values does the y-intercept represent? And number three, why would this method not work for determining the concentration of an unknown solution of zinc sulfate? Okay, those are your po three post-lab questions that you have to have done by the end of the lab. This is how you're going to be graded um, for the, your Beer's Law laboratory write-up. One point is going to be for the concentration of your dilutions. One point is going to be for your data table. One point is going to be for your post-lab questions. One point is for your lab conduct. And one point is for your the homework question number 33. So you got to finish your homework question by the time you you uh, number 33 by the time you leave the room. Now the first one concentration of your dilutions. That's that part of your data table. I'm going to check when you walk in the room. Do you have your concentrations done? If you don't have your concentrations your, of your dilutions beforehand done, you lose a point and you start with a B immediately before you ever start this lab. Now, of course, you're going to get five points for an A, four points for a B, three points for a C, two points for a D, and one point for an F. Okay? If you need any help or need any background information, you can go to MrAiden.com and go to your organic and nuclear review sheet, okay, your problem set, and I have some extra information about Beer's Law here. So if you need anything, go there first, then come and ask me questions. Um, I'll see you on the block day, guys. Hopefully you're ready to go, and hopefully you got those concentrations done by the time you walk in the room, and I want to see us learn a lot about absorbance and concentration. And again, make sure you concentrate the whole time. Have a good night, guys. I'll see you on the block day. Thanks. Bye.